Let's see, are we on? All right, we're live. Well, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, I wanted to jump on live today because I've had one question that has been kind of recurring. I keep seeing it over and over in the comments, so I just figured we'd have a little chit chat and talk about it. Uh, let me just make sure everything's squared away real quick because I gotta be honest, I'm still trying to figure all this garbage out. <laughs> with the uh, OBS and like the YouTube live, like it's so much more complex than just going live on Instagram, honestly, because I can just pop it up and we're live, but then it disappears and I think this is more helpful, more engaging, so um, let's see what we got. Oh, we already got some people in the chat, right on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a little something something. What's up you guys? Brian Nash is here, howdy. Oh no! Did it? It went with the old title. It went with the old title. I put in a new title and it went with the old one. Hold on you guys, let me see if I can change it while we're live streaming. Um, what, what did I name it? Uh, what kind of adhesive, parentheses glue, <laughs> do you use in Leathercraft. I don't know, you gotta throw little things like that in there for SEO. So if someone's searching something, like glue is really vague, so let me just uh, live stream. Okay, I think that works, but how do I save it? Your changes are being saved. Okay, hot dang. I hold my breath and use Barge or I breathe and just watch the room spin. Great stuff though. <laughs> That's a good point and we're definitely gonna talk about that. So that is the topic of conversation for today. Um, like I was saying, we've had, I, I mean, I've seen multiple comments come up and I just figure like if I see a similar comment coming up, that's probably a pretty good uh, question to answer on something like this, like on a live stream. So let's just do it. Let's just get at it. Um, e. Hernandez, hello from Del Rio, Texas. What's up? Tank Jones, love your work and content. Thank you so much. Sam Domingue. Mm? Did I pronounce that right? How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing fine. It's just me tonight, actually. Tuan Leatherco, what's up, Parker? What's up, man? What is your favorite thing you made? Oh man, that's a good question. Uh, it's it's got to be a bag somewhere. Hold on. Somewhere along the lines of like a product like this just really hits home for me. Just refined yet still really rugged. Something I would use every day and will be using once we have some stock of this. I don't want to like put this one to you shit because I got to get some photos, more photos of it and stuff, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always really proud of the bags I make. Also, that Old West uh, holster was pretty fun, and I plan on making a lot more of those, so. Um, okay, you guys, let's get right to the point, because I'm afraid that, you know, because these videos get saved into the feed, I don't want someone to be like, what's this video about? Glue? And they want to get their question answered. Oh, what glue do these guys use? And then it's like 30 minutes into the video, so let's just tackle it right off the bat. And then after we talk about the adhesive, we can just hang out and chat for a little bit, you know? You know? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I've gone back and forth quite a few times on, let me make sure we're still live. Still live, we're good. Um, I've gone back and forth quite a few times as far as like what glue I use. And the thing is, is like, that's good, right? You, I mean, this is what I'm using now. I may change it down the road. Um, no one says you have to stick with one thing forever. So this has probably been the most consistent product that I've used as far as adhesive goes uh, throughout my Leathercraft career. And as far as like function, this is definitely my favorite. This is called Barge Cement. Uh, real, uh, it's kind of a fan favorite as far as like the shoe or uh, you know, uh, boot making world goes. It's so strong that 
if you if you get a really good contact um, and you try pulling two pieces of leather apart, you're probably going to rip the leather before you rip the contact. I mean, this stuff is really strong. So I'm a big fan of it. And I like that you can get these giant gallons of it. I get this from Tandy. And of course, as always, um, we have our affiliate link down below. So if you click on our affiliate link, it's the first link you'll see in the description. It'll take you to Tandy. And uh, I'm not gonna do it right now, but I'll make sure that the part number for this specific glue is gonna be right at the top of that. So a little bit later, if you just wanna go uh, find this quick, I'll put the part number so that you can go pick one up. Um, yeah, I mean, as, as much stuff as I'm making, I go through these gallons pretty quick. So um, I'm a big fan of this stuff. It works well. Some of the downsides is that it's pretty toxic. Like if you want, you definitely want to be in a well ventilated uh, room if you're using a lot of this, unless you're into that stuff, you know? <laughs> it's so strong. I think my, the entire insides of my nostrils just went, huh? They just went like this, huh? Um, yeah, that one, uh, I, I, I know that like, there have been times like back when we were fulfilling the Kickstarter doing like hundreds of wallets at a time I remember I was just gluing like a madman uh, in kind of a tiny room and I remember getting like pretty lightheaded kind of losing myself I'd get a lot of headaches and so you, you have to be aware of that it might help to wear like a mask or if you just want to like take it easy you know most people are just doing like one or two pieces at a time one wallet one whatever it is um, I always refer to wallets because that's like what I make most of the time. I know a lot of you were making lots of other stuff. So uh, if you're just doing like small projects, um, you don't have to worry about all that. It's, this is a really good product. Um, the way it works is that you um, want to apply the uh, glue or the adhesive on one side of your leather and then apply it on the other side as well and then let it set up a little bit. Like the glue will actually kind of change color. It'll lighten up in color. And instead of looking like liquidy and, and dark, it'll kind of lighten up, almost get white or like a really light green. And uh, once it's like that, and basically if you like touch it and it doesn't come off on your finger, it's probably good enough to go. So then you just pop it up. You can like tack it down or uh, use a roller like one of these. I got this poly roller from Tandy and uh, it just like, really evens everything out. Make sure you get a really solid uh, contact there. So uh, there's a few different ways you can apply adhesive. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is just your traditional glue pot, like so many makers over the years. I mean, you'll any like traditional shoemaker, you're gonna see one of these in the shop. Um, they're awesome though. This, this little brush right here is replaceable. We're kind of on a wide lens right now, so um, I gotta get pretty close, but the little brush right here is replaceable. So if you ever like leave the glue in there too long or it just sits way too long and freezes up, um, you can always replace that brush and get a fresh one on there. Um, one tip that I've, I've learned after using this for a while is that if you just brush a little glue, glue on it, um, just around the rim before you set it in it'll get a much better seal and the glue that's inside will stay fresh so uh, one thing I want to mention is that um, uh, Technically when you when we're talking about Contact adhesive like this. It's usually much more Accurate to call it adhesive, but so many people just use the word glue including me and it's not exactly accurate, but I mean come on we're not we're not uh, we're not being all uh, poly pretentious over here, you know. We're just people, you know. We say stuff, and that's fine. And we say stuff. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna say glue, like 50% of the time, and it's fine. Um, and so here's the other product that I want to bring up. This I don't have the original bottle because I ran out, and I've been meaning to get more. I just keep forgetting. Um, but I still have some in my little squeeze bottle. This is called Eco Weld, and this bottle's clear, so you can see it's actually a really white adhesive. Um, this stuff, Eco Weld from Tandy again, both of these are from Tandy. Um, but this Eco Weld stuff is basically just a water based adhesive. There's just quite a few other products uh, like it. Well, I shouldn't say quite a few, I know of a few others. 
Um, and they're all really hard to pronounce. <laughs> uh, if anything, EcoWeld uh, gets the point on that one because it's easy to say. Um, but no, there's a company called Sewa, like the company that makes that tokenal stuff. I don't need to get it for you, but Sewa makes some uh, water-based adhesive, uh, Aquilum or Aquilum. I'm not sure how to, the pronunciation on that, but some really good stuff. So anyway, you can look around, but also Tandy sells it. Uh, it's called Eco Weld. Just look for like a water-based contact adhesive on the label. And uh, this stuff's awesome. It basically does the same thing that this barge does. Uh, the difference is it's definitely not as toxic. It smells just like Elmer's glue. <laughs> but um, it's so much safer to work with, I guess. Like you definitely won't get headaches working with this. So I, I, would, I would suggest if you're going to be using a ton of it, this would be a really good way to go. Um, and it's really strong too. I don't know, I, I wouldn't go as far to say it's quite as strong, the water-based stuff, as like barge cement. But, um, you know, if you're worried about like the health side of it, what you're breathing, um, this is a really good way to go. Also, if it gets kind of old and tacky and it's not um, the right consistency that you want, because it's water-based, you can just add a little bit of water in there, stir it up, shake it up, whatever, and um, you can get it to the consistency you want. Uh, especially like when you're using bottles like this, you can just get a nice little bead on the project you're working on. So there's a lot of benefits uh, to this stuff. And that's the funny thing. Like I go back and forth all the time. People are always like, which one do you use though? You know, like you're saying both, but which one do you use? And I literally use both of them. It's like whatever one's closer is what I use. Um, I have like a couple gallons of this stuff laying around. So I'm kind of just like working through it. There's a chance I'm like once it's this stuff's gone, the barge is gone. I might just stick with Eco Weld. Um, but, you know, I really like that these ones come in a gallon because I go through it a lot. So, uh, that is a, that's a pretty, I mean, that kind of covers the majority of it. So, like, just for example, when we're talking about adhesives, um, you might have seen in some of our project videos, like, you'll get, uh, Anytime you're gonna lay a stitch down, it really helps to be able to, um, you know, uh, adhere one piece to the other before you stitch so that the, the pieces aren't moving around. It's a little bit different from like fabric sewing. That was one, one thing I've seen, like um, the team of seamstresses that I used to work with over at Guru Gear, they were just amazing, working with like Cordura fabric, making beautiful bags, but they never used adhesive for anything and I was like, I was like, man, I can't sew anything without gluing it down. And then I realized, you know, that's just the nature of leather craft. It's just what you do. Um, it's a little bit different. You gotta be much more particular and careful with where that needle goes because once there's a hole in it, it's in, you're done. So it really uh, pays off to put some adhesive down and get the pieces to sit right where you want them before you lay the stitch down. Um, so for the most part, at least on our products, we don't have anything that completely relies on adhesive altogether. Uh, we always lay a stitch down after. So in the end, the adhesive is really just to help you get the stitch down without moving. And then after that, it really doesn't add to like the structural integrity of the product. Um, so, you know, um, let me just uh, read some of these comments now that we kind of covered some of the bases because like I said, those are the questions that I was getting a lot on videos. I mean, I wouldn't say a lot, but I did notice that there were like four or five questions that came in like all together, like really close to each other in my notifications. It was like, what glue do you use? What kind of adhesive is that? What are you using to glue it? So I'm like, all right, time to do a video. Okay, here we go. Reading some of the comments. We got... Jeff Moore, love your shop, totally jealous. Thanks, Jeff, appreciate that. Um, San Domingue, uh, don't sp <laughs> speak in a language I don't speak, sorry. Uh, D Rice says, howdy. What temperament is your harness bag leather? Um, the harness leather that we have used for bags in the past, I don't have any of them in, on hand right here. The only other bags I have are in different leather other than harness. but. It's like a pretty soft temper. I think that the all the wax and oil that's in Wicked and Craig's harness really aids to like a soft feel. 
um, as opposed to like the skirting, which is uh, a quite a bit like drier leather, um, which in this case works, it's working. Um, but yeah, it's like a pretty soft to medium temper, I'd say. Great information from Katie, Texas. Thanks, Jason. I hold my breath and use, oh yeah, I read that one. Hello from Texas from Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Uh, hello from Iran. Awesome. Hello, Mehdi Sabzavari. Mm, did I get that right? I'm doing best. Love your work and content. Thank you, Tank. I appreciate that. I think I already read that one. Man, you got the double shout out. Nadia Hernandez says hello. Hi, Nadia. Um, okay, let me scroll down a little bit. The Duke says I use Wellwood by Dap on all my projects for the past six years. That's awesome. Whatever works, man. You just figure out what works. For use with belts without stitching. Like I know a lot of people would actually prefer that the adhesive not be too permanent because you might want to remove it later or it might be like you're worried about it getting on the leather. Um, the good thing about this barge stuff, well really all of this contact adhesive that we're working with, if you get it on a piece of, hold on, I've got a bunch of these laying around, but if you get some glue where you don't want it, for the most part, it'll kind of just ball up and roll off, which is really cool. It's like, it's like flicking a boat, bo <laughs> I can't even say it. It's like rolling and flicking a burger, burger, bur burger, you know, flicking burgers. <laughs> Okay, so they have these, these are found at Tandy as well. These are adhesive erasers and they're so nice because if you get like, like just for instance on a, on a piece like this, um, on this western trim right here, a lot of times if I got the glue like outside of the line that I wanted it to, you know, didn't line the piece up perfectly and a little bit of adhesive is like sticking out, you can use the corners of this thing and just rub it off and it basically just balls up and rolls right off, it's amazing. So nothing's like too permanent or scary. Um, you know, some kind of glue out there, if you get it on the leather, you're donezo, like there's no hope. And so that's why this stuff is really like, I think is particularly good for leather craft because it's so strong when it comes in contact to itself. But if you have some like extra, you know, hanging off the edge or whatever, you can use the adhesive eraser and it'll basically just ball up, leaving no trace. So, just a little, uh, you know, a little something something. For use with belts without stitching, question mark, forgot to answer that one. No, I probably wouldn't, I mean, I don't know. I know like some shoe guys have used this stuff in certain use cases and uh, it holds up. I probably wouldn't, like I just prefer to stitch it if I'm gonna use it, but you could try, like that doesn't, you know, deter you from trying. I would definitely try it out on like a product for yourself and see how it holds up before you gift any or like sell them or anything. What are your thoughts on a traveling leather craftsman? <laughs> oh man, I love that idea. I think that would be so cool. How like build out an Airstream or something with a little workbench and just, I think that'd be cool. I mean, you'd, you'd have to be pretty limited on your equipment, but like, if you had like the Tandy Stitch Master, which is really small, it would fit just like right in the corner of the, your trailer or whatever. I think that'd be cool, man. It'd be really fun. Never rely on just the adhesive. You should always stitch. Yeah, see, I agree. I agree with that. I've seen other people um, not do that, but I, I prefer to stitch it. Uh, what are your... Oh, Brady Linebaugh's in the house. What's up, Dirty B? Good day from down under, Dubbas, New South Wales, Rod Jones. What's up, Rod? Um, yo, bro, it's been a while. What's up, Brendan? It has been a while. Well, I mean, I did a live stream a couple days ago, but uh, yeah, I mean, in general, I've been kind of distant just because we had the baby and then the kids were sick when we brought the baby home. There was a lot of stuff going on, but yeah, I'm trying to, to get on here. Have you ever used Gorilla Glue on leather? No, I haven't. Where can you get barge glue? Good question, Rick. I mentioned it earlier, but you can get it from Tandy. And I'm just gonna throw our Tandy affiliate link down below. Um, I mean, hopefully just to make things easier, but also it helps us out, you know? So 
We'll put that link down below and after this, I'm gonna go find the part number and I'll, I'll just put it underneath so you can find it really easy. But um, you can buy it in this gallon jug like this <laughs> or like a smaller, I think they have like a pint, just like a little tiny pint. I know the Eco Weld comes in a much smaller bottle, so um, both of them, amazing products. I'm gonna link them down below in the description once this live stream's over. I can smell it now since you opened everything. <laughs> Dude, it's so strong, I wouldn't be surprised one bit. I found barge glue at Walmart, Lowe's, Ace, Handyman, Hardware, not to mention a few. Yeah, 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 barge is a pretty general, you know, utility kind of, product i think you could find it in lots of places but um again tandy's your go-to leather place so you can find it there and also it helps us out if you order online um eco weld works really good i agree i love eco weld love the content bro you're giving me that get off your ass and do something itch that itchy itch <laughs> dude i've been told that before that i give people the itchy itch <laughs> That's funny. Like a different kind of itch though, you know? <laughs> can you put barge cement into little bottles? Yes, you can. I've got barge over here too. I have noticed though that the barge um, hardens. Like, I don't know how long this stuff's been in here because lately if I go for the squeeze bottle, I've been going for this. And if I'm going to like apply a big, you know, more surface area then I usually go for the brush. Um, and, and I've got this full of barge. So, but you, um, yeah, my, you can use the squeeze bottles, but you got to make sure you use it a lot. I've, or that you use through it, uh, quick is what I meant. Because when I started out using, trying to use bottles for my glue, I bought some big bottles, like the ketchup and mustard squeeze bottles. I was like, this will be perfect. And, uh, I noticed that like, the, the glue would harden and I wasn't able to get through a whole bottle before it would, you know, go bad. And I could have bought like a, like a thinner or something to repair it, but I just started using these little ones and I like them better because if you just fill it up just a little bit, um, you get what you need in your project and then you're not like wasting the, the good glue. So, uh, if it goes hard, it's not a huge deal. Like this, this stuff's definitely hard. It's not, <laughs> it's not even a, going to the top. So I need to replace that. But yeah, like these bottles are so cheap. I go through a lot of these. Um, um, but as far as like the squeeze bottles go, I do think the eco weld is better. Like it just seems to stay uh, the right consistency longer. And like I said before, if it does go hard, you can just throw a little water in there and you're good. Um, man, there's so many comments. This is amazing. You guys are so cool. We got 81 people in here. Uh, you're awesome. You guys are just cool, you know? It does smell strong. Larry, you can smell it too. We can't. Justin Schneider and Tom L says we can't be the only Weldwood users. Yeah, I've heard a few people say that. Do you make women's handbags? I do. I made one just the other day actually and sent it out to our factory to get some sample, some production samples made. So yeah, we're going to be doing some women's stuff on our site soon. They have traveling leather crafters at Ren Fairs. This lady was the most amazing band stitcher. That's cool. Right on. So it is a thing. Hey, can you make a wallet? <laughs> yes. Um, do you thin your barge? I, I haven't before, honestly, but it would be easy to, I'm sure. Right now, bro, make a wallet so we can see. <laughs> Dude, don't boss me around, man. I'm my own person, you know? <laughs> no, it, honestly, it's really late. It's, mm, it's 8.30 here in mountain time, mountain standard time. So uh, I got to get in soon. I just wanted to pop in and talk about glue real quick because if you weren't here in the beginning, I had a lot of people asking about it recently for some reason, like five comments in a row, just pop, pop, pop on my notifications. They're like, what kind of glue do you use, man? So I just figured I'd talk about it and I'm going to be trying, I'm going to try and be a little more vigilant in future videos in explaining like each step. You know, I, I think I get a little bit jaded, like each video I'm like, okay, I don't need to mention every single time what glue I'm using because 
I figure a lot of you are the same people watching each time, but uh, there are some new people popping in. Sometimes you like find our channel through a specific video and I wanna be pretty thorough, so I'll, I'll try and be better at that. I use the one with the brush just to try and limit the mess. Yeah, the brush, I mean, it just depends on the project. If you're trying to cover a bigger surface area, I think the brush helps, uh, not just helps, I think it's the best option. And for our wallets, like if you're just trying to, like on a wallet like this, the only area that I want glue is right where the stitch is. Uh, Cause if you get it any further down, then you're not gonna be able to use this area for cards or cash, including, you know, like you, you need that entire space right there to fit your card into. And when, I'm, when we're selling these, I don't want people to like get frustrated when their cards aren't going in. Even though if you probably just like worked it through a little bit, the glue would, you know, separate and you could, it'd be fine. But I just, you know, those first impressions are like, you gotta, you gotta just have the perfect product right out of the box. And so I like to be really precise with my glue. And that's why these squeeze bottles help for that kind of thing. It just depends on the project, so. Um, you, I use the squeeze bottles, got the idea here, works good, I use the brush to spread it out. I made my first wallet yesterday, my girlfriend and I watch you all the time. <laughs> That's cool, thanks Matthew. What's good y'all, what's up Eddie? Man, I can't keep up with the comments, you guys are killer! Thanks for the chat guys and girls, I have time, I have to check out now. Thanks for jumping in Sam, appreciate it. Love your channel, your videos are awesome. I'd love to buy you a beer if you ever want to hang out. I, I, I'm guessing, are you in Utah? Because that's a pretty uh, ethnic name, I might say. If I might say. Ex explain it like I'm five. That would be ideal for most videos. It'll explain in detail. Yeah, I know, you're right. And the hard thing is like most of the time I don't even realize I'm doing it. I like to, I really do like to try and be thorough and act as if, you know, nobody knows what I'm doing. But it is, it's tough because I know that so many people out there do know what they're doing. And I don't want to like waste their time. So it's just a really fine line. But also, I know every one of you have experienced this, but a lot of times when you're teaching something, you don't realize how far back you have to go as far as like the development of learning a specific skill. You, you don't realize like, like I, sometimes I have to put myself all the way back into my head that day one when I walked into a Tandy for the first time. I've talked about it a million times, but I bought all, like I had a lot of good help. Um, a girl named Vandy was there. She like took me under her wing and was like, well, what do you wanna make? You know, let me help you find the right tools. And um, I unfortunately didn't know what I wanted to make. I was like, I don't know, I just want to work with leather. <laughs> so she did the best she could with like this vague idea of what I wanted to do. But um, in the end, I went home with the wrong tools and, the, and definitely the wrong leather. I pulled from like some scrap bin or, or the remnants pack. And I, I had like a bunch of upholstery leather and I was just like, you know, I was like trying to burnish the edges on upholstery leather. I had no idea. And so that's the thing is I have to put myself back into that mindset and be like, some people have no clue where to begin and that's where I want to be of help. That's exactly why I partnered with Tandy. Um, any like sponsorship, I, I, I'm trying to add value to the channel and make it useful to people who are starting out. So it might not be as useful to people who already know what they're doing, but I'm hoping everyone can, you know, like I know I learn a lot from watching other leather workers go at it. <laughs> um, you know, like even if they're not trying to teach something, they'll just do like a video of a specific, they're like, oh, I've never, I've never thought of doing it that way, but that's cool. And then it like changes my life forever. So I'm hoping that's what we can get out of this, you know? That's what this community is all about. Oh, lost my number 52 russet for an hour. Found it outside just now, but it had rained. Oh, that's such a bummer. I'm sorry to hear that. But honestly, um, Farcelor is right. <laughs> uh, the water really shouldn't affect that harness leather too much because that stuff is so packed with um, oil and wax that like it's basically waterproof. <laughs> um, 
But if it does seem to be like a little dehydrated or drying up, you can just pick up some like some Smith Leather Balm, Smith's Leather Balm from our site, or there's a lot of other products you can find at Tandy. Um, uh, like one of my favorite conditioners is just straight up Neat's Foot Oil, but it does darken the leather a little bit, so you gotta be aware of that. Ever make a fire helmet shield? No, I have not. Uh, have you ever used hemp thread? I've seen it on some leather supplies websites. I haven't. Sorry. I, um, I guess I haven't experimented too much. Uh, it's called the curse of knowledge. True, true. Oh, Killinger. Ow. I didn't even know you were in here, man. Well, thanks for joining in. Okay, so really quick before um, too many of you peace out. Man, we got 105 of you here? Seriously, that's more than what we usually have on, on Instagram. And I always assume Instagram is going to be a little more engaging because it's like, I don't know, notifications work a little better, but maybe not. You know, maybe we got a good thing going. That's a good question. Leave it in the comment. If you had like a notification bell, you know, whatever, the pop, the, what is it? What's it called? If a notification popped up for when we went live, let me know if you if you got one or if you're just here because I posted it on Instagram. So I guess that would be the only other way of knowing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's been kind of frustrating because a lot of people have been like, dude, I'm subscribed to you and I've hit the bell and I never get notified for when you go live. So I'm sorry, guys. I, hate, I, wish, I wish I knew how to fix that. Um, but real quick, I do want to mention, I, I just have a couple of our 68s here. This, these are our three standard colors. We got natural, chestnut, and black. Um, we've got, we're kind of in a, we're in a really good spot right now with our inventory. And I'm so proud to say that because some of you know that we have been out of stock for quite a while on a lot of stuff and it's been hit or miss and I just like deeply apologize for that but also it's such an amazing problem to be having. We're so grateful for that. Uh, you know, at the risk of getting a little too chummy here. Really, we're so grateful for like the support you guys have been giving us. Um, I know that a lot of it is from YouTube. I know it is because as soon as we started being a little bit more active on YouTube, our sales picked up like dramatically. I mean, it was a night and day difference. So I know that a lot of that is you guys. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, I, uh, so yeah, I just wanted to like take a moment to say that like, w I, I know I've had a lot of comments. People are like, dude, when are these gonna be back in stock? When are these gonna be back in stock? And we do have the notify me emails going out. So if you signed up for like, hey dude, let me know when this comes back in stock you should be getting that notification email. But just in case you're not, like go check our website. We've got so many things in stock right now, uh, you know, relative to what we're used to. Some things that are coming in, um, we've got a whole batch of Buck Brown harness coming in. And I've told you that we've been like trying to phase it out and we're going to eventually, unfortunately, but we did do another big batch. We may do a couple more, but it's really hard to say because that stuff gives us trouble. Like, as soon as, like, for instance, we got a uh, hundred of them in uh, last week, and about 70 of them had just some like surface scratches that were uh, kind of causing a problem. And since we have a, a warehouse in American Fork that's now fulfilling everything, it, we haven't been able to like, personally go through and wax the, those scratches out. That's what we used to do. Like you guys have no idea how much work Wit used to put into fill, fulfilling orders because she would personally check every single wallet that came through. And if there was even a little scratch um, on the harness, you can do this. But if, if there was a little scratch, she would take Carnauba cream and buff it out every single scratch and just make sure each wallet was just like before it went in the mail. Um, but since our numbers have been growing a little bit, it's really hard to keep up with that. And that's one of the reasons we have to phase out the harness because it scratches up if you just look at it wrong. Like you could sneeze three rooms away and, and you go check your wallet and it'll have four scratches. Like it's, it's really unfortunate because it's beautiful leather, but we just can't like 
you can't keep up with it. It's let me give you an example. I've got one over here. Like this is a pretty good example of of why we're kind of facing this with the harness leather. Uh, this is probably I don't know if it went out this way. He might the, the customer might have you know. Uh, messed with it a little bit and caused some of these extra scratches that are here. I really don't think it had this many when it arrived to him, but we got this as a return just today uh, just because of the scratches. So like just to give you an example, like it's still a beautiful wallet. It's brand new. I mean, it's in great shape, but just even just those simple surface scratches kind of cause a problem on the grand perspective because even though it's a really simple fix, like you take some Carnauba cream and just buff it out with a little rag and you got a brand new wallet again. But it's really hard to convey that to, you know, over hundreds of customers. And I mean, who wants to like put work into their product when they get it, you know? No one wants to be like, oh, I just ordered a brand new thing. Can't wait to get it in the mail, open it up and be like, oh, so I, now I gotta like put some work into this, <laughs> you know? So it's unfortunate because I really love this leather, but, um, we just can't keep up with those scratches. So if, if you're a big fan of Buck Brown, like I am, um, of the harness leather, this is Buck Brown harness leather from Wicked and Craig. Beautiful stuff. Look at that pull up. Just lights up real nice when it bends. Um, if you're a big fan of this, you better go grab some soon. I think on Friday the, let's see, Friday? Oh, I don't know, I think tomorrow these will be added to our stock. Um, only only part of them though, because we're actually getting a big chunk of them back that we're, we're gonna bring back here to the shop. We're gonna buff everything out, make it look brand new again. Well, they are new. Sorry, I'm trying to like <laughs> go through my thoughts here. It's a brand new batch of wallets that just had a couple scratches on them and we didn't wanna sh ship them out until we could buff them out. So again, this is why we need to phase out the harness, but we're gonna, we have a batch of about 100 that are just ready to go as soon as we can buff them out. Um, so anyway, that's the story of the harness. We also have these. I'm so excited about these, you guys. We have 12, um, well, let me think here. Okay, I can't remember how many are in the first batch, but we, it, it's a small number. We only have a very limited amount of these uh, Chestnut 72s. This is a brand new bag, nobody has them yet. These are fresh, they're new. And uh, I'm just so excited about them. They're just, it's just such a classic bag. It's easy to get into, easy to use. It's got, it'll fit a 15 inch laptop. Um, and it's got pockets in here for a little organization. But other than that, it's just a really classic, simple silhouette. And um, yeah, so these are gonna be in stock on Friday. A really limited number. I'm talking like double digits. Um, so if, if you want one of these, don't sleep on it because they're gonna go quick. Um, what else? Basically anything you see that's out of stock on our site right now is either being made or shipped to us right now. So we're in a good position, like we're doing everything we can, just just like out of our minds, like chickens with their, their heads cut off, just trying to get everything back in good shape on our site, like things in stock, things rolling. Um, my partner Thomas is, has been a huge help in all of the logistics of this because I had no idea like how much work it was going to be to kind of like keep up with the demand. I mean, you guys, I started this by just like, you know, waiting for an order to come through and when it would, I'd be like, yeah, I get to make something and then I'd make it, you know, just package it beautifully and put it in the mail and then uh, as the demand picked up it's just it's it's a uh, it's been just like mind-blowing I'm just so grateful to you guys um, and I really appreciate your patience because this stuff isn't easy to like figure out um, we're, we're just doing everything we can to like make sure that the quality is on par ever that like we're still very involved with the production and make sure that everything is just like you know up to spec and that we're, you know, we're not like affecting or changing who we are or what we do, but at the same time being able to like keep up with the demand and like keep everything in stock and keep everyone happy. So bless your souls. Um, dang, man, you guys are so nice. Thank you, David Holt, 
Uh, people are donating through the uh, super chat, and I really appreciate that. I mean, that's what, that's the thing about YouTube. Like, it's so much work to keep up with YouTube and the videos and like put out free content. So any way that we can monetize it and, and make money, the more likely we are to spend time making content and doing things like this and engaging. You know what I mean? So we appreciate it, really do. Um, I think I saw another one come in, but man, thank you guys so much. I love that. Will you ever make backpacks? We definitely will. Yeah, it's on the list for sure. It, each new product that we add takes so much time and money to like, to get up and running, but I really want to do it. I really do. Looks like it's saying the stream health is a little low. We must be having like a poor connection. I hope none of you are experiencing any like lag or anything. But um, I know I've missed a ton of comments, so I apologize. I don't think there's any way I could go through all of them, but um, 76,000, nice job, man. Good content, thank you so much. I really like how you're scaling everything with the outsourcing, giving me all kinds of ideas. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's just been like, I'm just trying to hold on. Like, it's just been a wild ride. We're just trying to figure out how to do it and like keep things afloat and keep things running. Um, it's been amazing though. This, the change has been like such, uh, I don't know, it's just been a huge game changer because I, I really thought that like, I went down a bad road at one point. I was like, how is this business gonna work? Because the more orders we get, which should, which is a good thing, like the less happy I was. <laughs> it's such a weird concept, you know? It's just like every time I'd see an order, I'd be like, no! I mean, this was like at a certain point in our growth, you know? This wasn't like how it always was. There was a certain point where I was like, no, I cannot, like I'm already spending all Saturday, all, you know, majority of Sunday, every weekday, just fulfilling orders. And Wit was just out of her mind trying to like keep everything shipped and up. And uh, you know, we have three kids. And so the, the changes that we've made to outsource the manufacturing and the shipping has been like the most insane, beautiful thing that's happened to this business. And just so that everyone knows it hasn't compromised in quality. If anything, it's just made it better, honestly. We have so many eyes on it now going out. We have um, Evo Box has been amazing at quality control. They've caught like almost everything that's come into the, their warehouse. They're the ones who ship everything for us. So they don't put anything in the mail in, in, unless it goes through this super intensive <laughs> uh, vetting process of quality. So yeah, I mean, we're just, uh, yeah, we're just so grateful, so blown away by like where we're at with this. And I really hope this doesn't sound like bragging, you guys. It's not what I'm doing. It's not me. I just, I'm trying to express gratitude. Thank you so much. Um, if you ever wax cam, if you ever wa make wax canvas and leather aprons, it'd be awesome products to sell. Yeah, I know. I'd love to do that. Um, Ryan Savin of Little King Goods just made some really cool aprons. I was really impressed by those. I don't wanna like, you know, I don't wanna like step on his toes. He's made some really cool stuff. So go check out his, Little King Goods. And maybe one day we'll make them down the road. I could definitely see that happening, but I know the feeling almost turned away work because of it. It's hard doing everything yourself. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Like nobody will tell you that like starting a maker business where where the, the revenue, uh, you know, what am I trying to say? Where like the business relies on your hands working uh, is a smart business, a scalable business model. Um, unless you, you know, take certain steps to like delegate and outsource things, you know, that I mean, I, I just couldn't see it any other way. I mean, we could have, we could have hired more people, you know, invested in a larger space, uh, done things like that. And that's also a great option. We, we battled back and forth with all of this stuff so much. I mean, this is the kind of thing that keeps me up at night. So, um, I mean, that's why I wanted to start a podcast. There are a few makers out there talking about some really cool things um, in podcast form, but 
I don't know. Like, I think there would be it would be kind of cool to be specific about the leather craft world and how to build a business around it. And it would it would all come through YouTube anyway. So uh, if we do that, you'll see it. But that's that's the reason why. You know, like I, I would love to talk about stuff that's not just straight up the craft, but also like, hey, how do you how do you keep this sustainable and make it work? You know, how do you actually make money doing it? been watching this channel for about a year now your videos have helped me and i've learned a lot from watching you and they're very inspiring don't stop keep them coming man thank you so much those comments are literally the things that keep me going i mean it sounds cliche and you probably typed that thinking like oh he's gonna keep going you know whether i say this or not but literally reading those things are are is like what drives me to keep going um and it, and it sucks because the negative ones have almost as much weight in like making me think like man maybe I should stop you know and I wish it didn't because the the negative comments are so heavy but when when I see stuff like that it trumps it you know it trumps the negative ones it makes me think like maybe what we're doing is worth the time and the effort and I love interacting with you all like it's it's really fun to kind of tap into this community and and just be able to like share, you know, share knowledge. I learn a lot from you guys. You know, like it's just a, it's a cool thing going on. It's a real cool thing. Podcast, please. On the number 72, will an iPhone fit into the pocket? Yes, it will. I literally designed, have I, I think I said literally like four times now. I need to stop because it's not a word I like that much anyway. But um, I actually, <laughs> designed this pocket specifically for that. Like, and and yeah, phone sizes are gonna change over time. I can't imagine they're gonna get too much bigger because no one wants to put anything bigger than that in your pocket. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's not like you have to use this for a phone, but I just feel like having a quick access spot for your phone so you don't have to do the, you know, the full lid every time, that's actually gonna be really usable. You, you have to be, you're kind of limited on like what kind of pockets you can put on bags like this. You don't want to do anything too bulky or anything that will like fill up too much because this is where, you know, it sits up against your body. And so I just felt like it's, it's a really awesome place for a phone and it fits really snug in there. You know, like I, I'm not too worried about like needing the flap or anything. You're not going to be doing backflips with the bag and it sits real tight, snug. It's a cool little spot. I was, I was actually really excited about that pocket. We put rivets on there so that, um, you know, as tension gets applied to that, um, it's not gonna pull up those stitches right there. So I'm really, really happy with this bag. I'm so excited to actually put it to use. I've been wanting to carry one myself. Um, and one of the things coming down the line is going to be the same bag, but a little bit deeper and maybe a little bit different dimensions in the other areas too but it's going to be this essentially it's going to be the same bag uh but it'll be designed specifically for camera gear with a removable padded insert uh you know a couple lenses a body and it'll be something that like you can open up access your camera gear and a laptop because that's what i carry like that's all i carry is a laptop and camera gear everywhere I go, I really want to be able to do it all. That's the one thing that would keep me from like taking that bag right there and just using it every day. Is like, where am I gonna put my camera stuff? Oh man, USN Doc Dorman, thank you so much. We got another super chat donation. I've learned quite a bit from your vids. Just finished a card wallet with an Italian veg tan, getting better every day. Thanks for the inspiration. Thank you for the support. You guys, I mean, I, I know like, I know a lot of people will be like, why would I, <laughs> why, why would I, you know, I don't know. It's free content. Why would I, you know, voluntarily give up money when I don't have to? Like, uh, that's, that's a tough thing. I really appreciate it when you guys do stuff like that. That's just, that's what keeps this stuff going. Um, Thomas G's in the house. Cool. I didn't see you jump in. Um, what's up, Thomas? Which one of you cotton-headed ninny muggins are leaving negative <laughs> Dude, that that's the best description for the YouTube trolls. <laughs> I love, you gotta love Elf. Uh, whoa, James Page, there might be children present. Yeah, dude, you really should be watching your language. That's a little out of hand. This is a family show, you know? 
Thank you for all the videos you put out. It's worth it for all of us. I watch your stuff more than any others. Keep them coming. Gosh, thank you so much. What kind of videos do you guys like? I, I would love to know that. Like, it seems like since we started doing more project videos, uh, that stuff has picked up a lot m more traction. You know, we get a lot more views and engagement when I just start a project from start to finish, film the whole thing. Um, but like, I also love doing live streams like this and maybe in the future we'll do project live streams, but um, I love to just like watch out for questions and concerns you guys have and be able to tackle them in this manner. I think uh, it's just a cool way of doing things. So let me know, maybe it's just a mix of everything, you know? Just found your videos a couple weeks ago and have been learning a lot about glue and stitching and patterns, that's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Can't believe anyone leaving negative comments. <laughs> Thanks Cheryl. It's definitely, uh, yeah, it definitely happens. That's just YouTube though, like you can't avoid that. You know, if you're gonna put yourself out there, you have to expect people are gonna be idiots. <laughs> Uh, first time live with you. Well, welcome, William. Thanks for jumping in. You're up late. Really good work. Yeah, I am. It's almost 9 p.m. I gotta go back in the house. Um, love projects and the how-to skill videos. Well, cool. Well, again, you guys, thank you for jumping in on this live stream. There's, there's been like about a hundred of you here ever since we started. So thank you. Um, I hope we cleared up the questions about glue. Like I said, I saw so many comments about it. It was like in a row all in I think it was like all in just a couple days I had like four or five comments people were like what kind of glue does this guy use? <laughs> I love it when people ask questions like as if I'm not gonna see it uh, Because then I can answer it and I'd be like hey, I'm here <laughs> But yeah, I, I saw a comment like that. So I'm hoping this answers the question. I mostly use barred cement if you're just jumping in now um, or eco weld, which is the water-based contact adhesive. I don't have the original bottle I just put it in here and the other stuff's gone. So I need to get some more but it's called eco weld both of these you can get from Tandy and uh, Don't forget. I'm gonna have my affiliate link down in the bottom. So first link in the description I believe I think I can see it from here. Yeah, it'll be the first link in the description and after this stream I'm gonna go add the part numbers. I think they're already buried in the list but I'm just gonna put them up to the top or like right under the affiliate link so that you guys can find them and go pick up some eco weld or barge either one they're great options this one's a little less toxic this one's pretty toxic but really strong um, so maybe just try both you know get a smaller can and uh, just try them both out see what you like but great options for leather work and uh, yeah, oh, and that was my other point. We already talked about it, but we have a lot of good stuff in stock right now, um, which has been kind of rare for us. We're just, we've been like, just doing everything we can in our power to keep things in stock and keep things rolling. And right now we have some good stuff in there. Um, and, and basically anything that's showing out of stock now is either being made or shipped right now. So um, we're, we're, we're finally like cranking it out, getting in a good rhythm. Uh, thank you guys for being patient. Thanks for uh, being part of all this and like just being in the community and being active, like commenting, liking the videos. That's what makes this stuff all work. So we really appreciate it. And um, I'll catch you later this week. I'll be posting a video. You know, I still haven't decided what days I'm going to do the videos. Things are kind of up in the air right now. I'm gonna be, I'm definitely making a goal of mine to be posting more often, more frequently, hopefully multiple times a week, especially with this better live stream situation we have going on. So we'll see you guys soon. Um, yeah, have a good night and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.